Hey, welcome to the channel, everybody, and thanks for checking out the channel. Now it's called Ham Radio Dude, and I wanted to provide you with a little bit of an update today. Nothing too serious. Um, I haven't been feeling too well, so I haven't been able to make all the Delta Loop videos that I promised you eight months ago and so forth. However, I am happy to report that I was able to do some updates on the Proto Spike, which we will talk about today. And we'll go into a little bit of detail of what's the status of this proto spike. Now, if you're unfamiliar, a brief summary is I basically made these spikes that go into the ground. And once they're in the ground, you can put your ham radio mast over them, allowing you to support your ham radio mast for portable use, wire antennas, and so forth uh, with relative ease. And the nice thing about this is it's small enough to fit in, say, a backpack. Now, when I did my initial testing, I printed it in polycarbonate and I was banging it with a hammer with a mallet, no problem, no breaking, no bending of threads. So I send the proto spike over to Mike, to Mike for his Poda 20, which is his carbon fiber mast that he worked with Gigaparts to release. Mike, within the first, I don't know, probably 10 minutes, if that, was able to break the proto spike, in particular, the threads that were on either the tent stake or inside of here were bent and he could no longer use the spike. Which got me to thinking, you know, there's a lot of variables out there that are, well, let's just be real here. There's a lot of variables out there that can cause problems and could be unforeseen in different environments. So if I live in Illinois and I send this to somebody in Arizona, we're gonna have different soils and we're gonna have different environmental factors that make this work better or worse. And in, in the case of Mike, Sending it to Texas was worse. I think the soil is a lot more rigid or stiffer out there. And he just couldn't get it in the ground. So when he hit it with that hammer, it bent everything. Now I tell you all that because there are people out there who are asking me, hey, when is the spike going to be ready? When's the spike going to be ready? And I, I got to tell you, I just like to do these things because it kind of keeps my mind going. And I post all the files on Thingiverse, you know, so if there's something you want, you can go on there and take it to a local library and print it yourself. Or maybe your ham radio club has their own 3D printer. So one of the things I do want to mention is when I send Mike his Proto Spike version one, I send it in a material that you print with a 3D printer known as ASA. And ASA is a strong material, uh, but maybe it wasn't the best material for making the proto spike. And I've made a few changes if you couldn't tell. Uh, but one of the main changes is I switched from the ASA that I send Mike to the polycarbonate that I was using on my proto spike that was withstanding all those high impacts. And in the polycarbon that I'm using, uh, there's now a mix of carbon fiber blend in here. Now you might be worried about, oh, carbon fiber is gonna interact with an antenna. But remember, most of these masks that these are intended to be used for are using carbon fiber in their masts. So it's not a huge deal that the spike is made with carbon fiber. And there's been people out there who will tell you things like, oh, if it's inside of the mast, it's gonna break the bottom section of your mast. Now I want you to think about this for just a moment. If you have this spike in the ground like this and you put your mast over it, that's 20 feet tall, and you have a wire on the top of the mast all the way up here and you bend, where is, where's everything gonna bend at, right? It's going to bend here. Very rarely do we see this whole bottom section bending. It's not going to. So I'm really not super worried about the mast itself breaking, but I did make those changes. And then of course, Mike had mentioned about the spike being inserted into the piece of PVC. And that's one of the changes that I did today. And here's how I did it. Now with these changes that I made, even though this is printed with polycarbonate carbon fiber, a beautiful print job, I don't think it's gonna withstand huge impacts, right? So I gotta find a way to make sure that people are using it in a way that wouldn't you know, damage this. And that's my main concern why I don't have that out yet is I would hate to sell somebody something that's not going to last. My goal is to have things at least be durable, you know, for normal use, right? But now you can unscrew that threaded spike on here. And uh, again, these files will be on Thingiverse. Then you get out a piece like this, which has your tent spike in it. Now the tent spike itself is aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you're at. And the problem with that is, is it, 
can misshape. So this spike here, after we hit it in the ground a few times, is going to flatten out. This is like the JPC12 spike. But now that I've unscrewed it, there's a little bit of a thread in the middle of this cap. I'm just gonna screw this cap back on to the side that I took it off at. I'm gonna flip this around and then I can screw this spike right here into the other side of the cap. Now these two caps here, they're just glued down. Okay, they're glued onto the PVC with super glue. That's all it is. And that's it. So now when we go out there, we could spike into the ground and we could take out. One of the things that you might experience though when you're taking it out of the ground is if my hand were the ground, people sometimes don't always pull straight up. They wanna pull, you know, like this. And my concern again there is that there's gonna be added stress onto this part here. You might also notice that this cap here that I'm referring to doesn't have a threaded insert anymore. And the reason why is those threaded inserts were, I mean, they were nice, don't get me wrong, but they are a lot of work to put in correctly and get to stay in. So, you know, maybe that's something that we continue to redesign and, and figure out. But I think my ultimate goal is if this is a good enough proto spike, maybe this will be one of the things I send to the lab for injection molding. Injection molding could be an expensive thing, but uh, surely the POTA 20 will be around for quite a while. And I don't know for sure, but if the carbon six is the same diameter as this, then that's more potential for sales on these. But also that helps me recoup the cost of injection molding. Not to mention various fishing poles that might have that diameter right there or larger. And then when you're done, of course, all you got to do is unscrew the thread. Screw the tent stake back into the cap now. And boom. Screw the cap back on to the end. And put it in your backpack. You're ready to go portable. Or rather, I guess the better way to put it is pack up to go home. You were already portable. Actually, I don't even really care where you go. Somebody insert the song closing time here. And I think I'd like to conclude today's episode with a final thought or two or three. Number one, I guess I'm at this point here where I'm asking myself, are people going to receive this video well? And I think that the answer is no. And a lot of people might even ask or just skip over the video, but they might ask, what does this have to do with ham radio? Well, a couple of things. Number one, I'm building a spike for a ham radio mast so you can use portable operations. Number two, the maker space. Okay, that's 3D design, 3D printing, a lot of tinkering, if you will. It's very well aligned with the amateur radio community, if you will. I mean, think about it. We have a license to experiment with radio frequencies and building things, and that's what tinkerers do, and that's what I did right here. So basically my interest in amateur radio has now led me down a rabbit hole full of really cool design stuff. And I do this and I like to release the files for free so other people can get excited and involved. Maybe it's your first 3D printer or maybe you actually go out to the library like I mentioned earlier and you print these up and you build your first one. And although it's not the greatest thing in the world, you're accomplished because you know your gear in and out. You build this, you know how it functions. When you get into design, you know even more how things function. You know, same thing with a radio. You build a radio, you know how that radio works. And if something's not right, you could say to yourself, well, I bet there's a FET somewhere or something. If you couldn't tell, I don't know much about electronics. I know enough to get me by. Anyway, that's not the point. The point being is the, the more we know our gear, when it comes time for us to actually have to use our gear, we know our gear and we're not afraid of failure or we're aware of the faults and we know how to adapt to them and eventually overcome to accomplish whatever we're trying to accomplish, whether it's a POTA activation or maybe even something like a natural disaster. So with it, that's my update on the proto spike. I don't know, actually, maybe there's one more thing. I don't know if or when these would be for sale. I like the concept, but I don't want to just sell everybody garbage. Thanks for watching the channel. Hope you have a good one. Maybe this interested you. If it did, please let me know in the comments below and have a good one. 73.